So I still remember I used to put my baby to sleep and then spread all my notes on my dining table and then write PhD thesis up to 2.30 in the morning. If the mother has an inclination towards science, it definitely has an effect on the children. We find now most of our biology is done being done by women. So I finished my, actually I finished my PhD in a record time of two and a half years. I had to struggle a lot and fight against all odds to get a position in that university. Choosing science is as natural as choosing arts. I mean, throughout my career, I have never perceived myself as a woman achieving something. It is, it is a person who achieves something, whether it's man or woman, it is, it is, an, it is an activity of equal opportunity. I mean, there is no distinction. Development and modernization in India have been instrumental in ensuring women's entry into higher education and science. Yet it is said the extent of their position and progress has been determined by a long-standing patriarchy. In the early Vedic period, women from the elite class were privileged enough to gain access to learning along with men. Gargi the philosopher, Lilavati the mathematician and Khana the astronomer are famous names of the period. Later, because of the rising patriarchy, women no longer enjoyed this privilege. Till the British period, very few names of women appear in the historical accounts of learning. Of late, the commitment to women's education has been reiterated in several government commissions. Situations have definitely improved in the independent India. Yet there are problems in the opportunity of advancement. Of course, all the landmarks in the career are not very pleasing. Now the landmark was uh, my getting that position of a leader in this, in the university, in the university. So long, I was not a faculty member. I had to struggle a lot and fight against all odds to get a position in that university. So I say that that is also a landmark in my career. It was against the opposition of the, the then vice chancellor, who of course at a later stage became very much um, pleased and uh, changed his opinion completely. Even if there are no obstacles from home, from parents or from husband, from family, uh, there are obstacles in the sense that people are just not ready, you know. For example, when we were in Canada, I was told several times that uh, both husband and wife cannot get uh, jobs in the same department of physics. It was almost like a written rule there. So now, now whom, whom do you, you know, blame for that? I mean, it's just the times were such. If your family is behind you, you are able to give more time and you can make a good base for yourself and so that is very important and throughout there is no doubt but in the early years it is it is where this is where the women lag behind men because those are the years when they'll have children they have to settle down look after them so if the family support is solid and uh, they feel comfortable sitting in the office then only you can do research However, despite all odds, there are quite a number of success stories for women scientists in India and the field of work spans as varied domains of knowledge as Indian men have treaded. My most exciting period is set certainly when I identified immunology as my, you know, as my future career. Uh, before that, the traditional subjects were all there, of course. And it took me some time to identify immunology because it wasn't in our country.
but certainly that has been an unceasing uh, joy i have uh, you know i mean i continue to be fascinated by immunology yes and uh, so research wise i think that and research wise in leprosy i think i first got recognition perhaps internationally when i showed uh, i went against what was then the slight dogma that existed as to why leprosy patients have generalized disease and it was at that time implied based on a particular type of cell which is suppressing the immune response and we found uh, molecules and another cell which we thought is suppressing which we continue to think is suppressing so that caused a slight controversy in literature which sort of got resolved uh, reasonably well i joined my phd in uh, university of tennessee and there also um, i did um, quite well you know reason good um, i did quite well and um, so i finished my actually i finished my phd in a um, record uh, time of two and a half years and so we were you know all uh, very uh, jubilant and you know like uh, in high spirits see that in fact my um, advisor at the university of tennessee he made this comment oh these days uh, young people you know they plan their life so well that i did not lose even a day uh, of my uh, you know studies or career what motivates women to opt for a career in science a consensus seemed to emerge that for women to pursue a serious career her family needs to be supportive and of a higher awareness level I actually selected medicine as my career when I was about 10 years old I wanted to become a doctor so I continued working for it but while I was doing my medicine about our uh, second year or so when we go into subjects like pathology microbiology I became fascinated by the subject of pathology which uh, in fact describes how disease comes about what is the basis of disease and how you differentiate health from disease etc and at that time we also had in the department of pathology in the all india institute uh, very eminent uh, scientists medical scientists you can call them who were not only doing diagnostic uh, work but also investigating diseases of importance to india like uh, malnutrition uh, cirrhosis which occurred in indian children and uh, things like that which made me realize that one can through experimental work and through science understand our health problems in a better manner and give a good basis so at that time when i was young and i used to say i shall always do pathology and experimental pathology my teachers uh, smiled and said you know when you go into the wards you will get attracted by being a real doctor and you may not come back to this but actually i really found this very fascinating we also had at that time in all india institute a subject biochemistry which was just beginning in medicine and we were the first uh, in the institute to have it as a separate subject for medical graduates we were also fortunate that uh, the spirit of uh, experimentation was started uh, very early as students we used to be given summer fellowships by which we could go into laboratories and uh, you know get exposed to experimental work so that's how my fascination started with experimental work when i was in school and uh, the option was given to choose science or arts this was in 1962 uh, science had lots of fascination At that time science was developing and there was lot of fascination and it is this which prompted me to choose science and specifically biology as a career i would like to say that i was interested or fascinated in uh, interested in science and scientific experiments from my very childhood days this may be due to my maternal grandfather late professor mohan mohan shakhal During summer nights under the blue sky, he used to tell me about the stars and planets and comets, particularly the groups of stars and why and how their positions in the sky change. I also enjoyed with him studying the nature around us. He was, although he was a professor of English, he was a 
man of true, he was truly a man of science. And my early induction was from him. During my school days, of course, my most favorite uh, subjects were science and math. But at that time, I was too young to think whether I'm going to take science as my career or even whether I'm going to be a careerist at all. But uh, since in our family, by our family tradition, we have to go for higher education, uh, I do my higher education, it was all science. The first thought that I am going to be a scientist, or rather I am taking sci will take science as my career, started crystallizing after I joined Bosch Institute, that's Bosch Bigger Mandi, which was founded by Sir Jagadish Chandra, Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bosch, as a research scholar. While the women scientists we met were mostly hooked to science since childhood, some came to the field by default. I think. Uh, the big influence was my father. Uh, he was a scientist and since he inculcated in us the, you know, the love of science and uh, also expected us to be scientists. So I think from our childhood, uh, two of my sisters, we had three sisters, uh, two of my sisters, me, myself and my eldest sister decided to be uh, scientist or choose science as our career. By their own admission, women were not encouraged to take up non-traditional careers like that of a mathematician even two decades back. I come from the era when women becoming mathematic mathematician was still a kind of you know taboo. So my father was not very happy and he said no no either you become a medical doctor or you become a teacher at the most, but no career of a mathematician will be very unhappy if you do that. And you'll be surprised that for the one year, just for the sake of my father, I went for medicine, that is my intermediate first year, I did biology. But I was not very, uh, really happy with biology. So finally, I went to my uh, principal in women's college in Usmania University, whom I always remember. Her name was Dr. Sri Devi, she's no more now. And I explained to her my whole situation. I said, look, I'm really deeply interested in mathematics, physics, and I do not want to go for uh, science. And she called my father, you know, and she helped me out. And my father agreed to her. Uh, my father is uh, responsible for my, for building up a career in mathematics uh, for me. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, this was, I'm talking of several years ago, when it was not a, um, a tradition for women to go up for career in science and so on. Uh, he was, he is a professor of mathematics and um, he asked me when I was in high school what I would like to do, whether I'd like to do, go for medicine or I'd like to teach or what, what was my intention. I said I was only interested in mathematics. So he said that's perfectly fine. I'll take you to the best mathematicians, let you meet them and you can do whatever you want up to whatever level you would like to specialize. And uh, he is solely responsible for my taking of my, I mean, my continuing as a career, in particular a career in mathematics. But today, given the opportunity, women are not deterred even to reach the remote lands of Antarctica. That time, next year, the first Indian expedition went to Antarctica. So I just applied to go. And first I was not selected because they didn't take women scientists. But in the third expedition, I just uh, received a telegram uh, to come for an interview to um, go to Antarctica. They were th thinking of taking two lady scientists and myself and Aditi Pant uh, from National Institute of Oceanography was selected. And uh, so Antarctica was just like being in the moon for us. I mean, it's nothing similar to anywhere we have worked. It's just uh, a vast continent full of I mean covered by ice and there is no other color, just white and blue and uh, very cold and windy and since I am a geologist I uh, had to do a lot of field work. I mean, we stayed in the tents and that was itself an experience, staying in tents in that cold climate. And then since we worked in summer we had uh, 24 hours daylight. So we used to go out early in the morning, sort of 7 o'clock, 
and then walked till 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the night, since there was daylight. And whole day oh, we would keep on working. And the thing is, in that cold climate and since there was no pollution, you can really walk for hours. We walk 14 hours a day almost. But um, if you feel tired, you just rest for some time and then you regain your stamina and can walk for hours. And it was a great experience. And for a geologist to walk in Antarctica is a special, um, special privilege because although in Antarctica is covered by ice, the rocks which are exposed, uh, actually it's just like island, you know, when the thickness of the um, ice is less than the height of the mountain or mountainous area, the rocks are exposed. So although the 98% of Antarctica is covered by ice, 2% of rocks are exposed. And when they are exposed, they are fresh and there is no vegetation. So you can almost see continuous 90% exposure. And it's really great to work. Some have made their marks in most modern fields like biotechnology, astrophysics, immunology, modern mathematics or even geology. Now why magnetic reconnection is important? Magnetic reconnection is important because it, it, the magnetic fields which are prevalent in the universe in one few seconds, I mean a, a very uh, fraction of seconds even, they can give a, a lot of energy to the system. And this is how we have our solar flares from the sun which a uh, lot of flares come and they hit the magnetic field. Then the magnetostorms are formed on the, on the, uh, on the magnetosphere which are called geomagnetic storms. They, they also create this uh, geomagnetic storm. So magnetic re reconnection is a phenomena which is prevalent everywhere. And alphan waves are also prevalent in the universe. So lately I have been engaged in a type of uh, seeing how alphan waves and magnetic reconnections. Alpha waves and magnetic reconnection can be connected to each other. They have shown that to make a perfect fusion of dual roles of house manager and a professional, a woman need not be a super creature. After uh, finishing PhD from uh, National Chemical Laboratory, I immediately could go abroad for postdoctoral training. By then, I already, um, before I completed my PhD, I had a, a daughter. So, um, what I, when I said that I decided then and there, because I had a lot of trouble in looking after a child and then uh, writing up the thesis. I still remember I used to put my baby to sleep and then spread all my notes on my dining table and then write PhD thesis up to 2.30 in the morning. So, after taking all that trouble, naturally I felt that I can't give up now after having come to this stage with so many difficulties. There is no denying the fact that the women of India have come a long way through the pathway of academic recognition. But ideally women constitute half of the population and they should have about 50% representation in every aspect of the country. That still is the holy grail to be achieved. It's a long journey ahead. It remains to be seen whether the journey to the summit remains a lonely one.